So thank you very much and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Now, yesterday you learned a lot about the products, the services of Fabersoft. You discussed a lot the usage of all these uh, products for your own purposes. But there's one major issue we should discuss this morning, and this is the role the customer plays in this situation. Because at the end of the day, all the things you do, all the usage of those tools of those applications have one single purpose. Because there's one guy paying for this, and this guy wants to make business by using these tools. So at the end of the day, it's the question, how does your customer benefit from the usage of these applications, of the combination of these applications? So today, we focus on the perspective of a customer. And it's one example I would like to share. It's the example of my own company, St. Gallen Business School, where you see some specific needs, changes, risks, challenges in the business of a small and medium company in Europe, which is quite typical for many, many companies in this world. So there are three points I would like to share with you. First, determine the current situation, or let's call it uh, this way, who are we? So we have to determine first the current situation of St. Callum Business School. Who are we? What is our challenges today? What were our traditional core competencies? What made us a, eh? no, it's the premium supplier of management education in the German speaking world. The second point is we have to jump into the future. We have to check what is what we want? What is the basic need we have as St. Gallen Business School by using all these technologies you discussed yesterday? And of course, the third issue I'd like uh, to discuss with you is the question of implementation. So how does Fabersoft help us to become better, to beat our competition on the way of digital marketing? So these are the three highlights I'd like to stress. So, determine the current situation. Who are we? St. Gallen Business School, as I already explained, the premium supplier of management education in the German-speaking world, based on the holistic management approach developed in St. Gallen during the last 40 years, not only developed, but also improved. And we provide seminars for managers in specific topics general management issues, strategic management issues, marketing, sales, leadership, motivation, finance, controlling. So no detailed special topics, but the overview of all those things a manager needs in the 21st century. Our target group is, of course, managers, middle management, top management from small, medium companies, big size companies, and there's one major task we had to fulfill during the last 20 years to become that successful as we are. Because there's one fact we don't know. We do not know when does a customer takes the decision for a specific seminar. This decision-making process is somewhere out in the mist. You cannot seize it. Because sometimes it happens that HR comes to a manager, tells him, look, we see there's some specific gap in your curriculum. You have to fill this gap, for example, finance issues, because he's an engineer. Um, I would recommend you to visit the seminar somewhere. Or the manager tells his employee, we have a specific project. Maybe you should get some more information about project management. Go and visit a specific seminar or a manager itself reflecting, a basic key competence of managers, reflecting, finding out there's some missing issues for his general management view. So maybe he wants to visit the general management seminar to fresh up his knowledge he got 20 years ago at the university. So again, he wants to buy or to order a specific seminar for this topic. Sometimes you even have the situation that the guy is interested in a specific seminar, but it's more important where the seminar takes place because he likes southern Switzerland, it's warm in summer, brilliant atmosphere, so the topic is secondary. This is also a specific aspect. 
And these decision-making processes, they take place somewhere in the company. At some time, we do not know. So our main task was to be there when the decision was made, to be there on the table of this specific manager, HR responsible, when the seminar decision is made. So perfect would be we are there every single day, every single hour. But the problem is, you know that as customers, this is quite boring. If your supplier calls you every day, tells you, oh, there's a special offer we have, please buy, this is, this is very boring, so this is too much. But at the other hand, if we send only one brochure or one mailing per year, so we got easily forgotten. And our key competence, main key competence was during the last 20 years, we have a really good idea what is the right time to be there when decisions were made. So we know exactly when to send mails, when to send brochures, when to make some advertisements in newspapers, magazine, which means in fact traditionally we are a print-based company. So if you have the customer here, we address this customer basically traditionally by print issues, by brochures, where plenty of information uh, is there. So first, core competence is knowing when. And the second core competence is we're brilliant in writing texts. So in my opinion, if you look at seminar brochures in German-speaking world, you will not find a better brochure with better texts as we have. This is not uh, given by God or whatever. It was a process of development, idea of developing ideas, how to form, formulate texts to address the needs of the customer. So second core competence is we know what kind of information a future customer needs. Third core competence is, is addresses. So you see, it's, in fact, it's a direct marketing business. We know everything about addresses, we know what address is interesting for us, what address is not. We have more than 250,000 addresses in our database where we exactly know which makes sense to send a brochure and when and where it does not. So that was the reason St. Gallen Business School today is the major supplier for management education, for top-level management education in the German-speaking world. We also developed 10 years uh, ago, or even 13 years ago, a first version, and 10 years ago, the actual or current version of a website. But to be honest, it's just another information tool. So this is print, this is website, an information tool which has the same information, the same things we tell the customer as it is in the brochure, because we didn't need to. If you look traditionally at how people ordered, they sent in a paper form, if you look at the brochures outside, we still have this paper form at the end of the brochure. They send us letters writing, hmm, dear Mr. Mundwiller, I would like to attend to a specific seminar. They send in the forms, they used fax. Well, you still know this specific technology, it still exists. So six years ago, 80% of our orders were based on traditional media. So it was not a problem, and the website was just another information tool because some guys, some real digital nerds, they uh, didn't only read the brochure, they already went to the website, saw the same things, said, oh, that's very serious, they tell two times the same story that works, so let's order, maybe even by an email. So if you listen to this description, you think, uh, we're in the 21st century, so what happens? Now, we shall not forget that the digital age, many, many researchers promised in the middle of the 90s, many researchers promised at the golden age of the internet, at the change of the century, was very interesting for digital professionals, for media. You see the same hype today with media channels, Twitter and so on. But for bricks and mortar business, for traditional conservative businesses, for B2B businesses, it's a time lag of at least 10 years. And this time lag happened during the last five years. There was a sudden shift away from print, still as an information channel, but away from print as the communication channel, away from print as the order channel. So if I look at the year 2011, uh, 2011 80% of our orders were given by email were 
given by a digital way, 10% were facts, 10% were letters. So we need a written form. So our major issue is we have to develop a new way of understanding our marketing strategy away from the classic direct marketing, the traditional marketing, to develop the idea of a digital, of a new way of digital marketing. And the answer for all those challenges, it's not a problem because we still uh, have a lot of participants during the tra traditional ways, but we see that the future generation educated in today's universities, being our customers in 10 years, in 15 years, so we still have time to react, they do not want only be addressed by the traditional ways. They do want to use the new media, the new form you can use as a platform. So the answer to our problems is a customer web portal. It's not an information portal as it was. Our traditional website is nothing but an information portal. The future is a customer web portal. Now, to look close to this issue of customer web portal, we have to go back in history and we have to go back a bit in, in a theoretical approach. So a customer web portal is nothing but a medium. A medium like radio, like TV, like newspapers. And we have to apply a specific concept of media, a concept of media developed by the University of St. Gallen. Now, you have to know, the University of St. Gallen is well known for management uh, theory, and it was the first university, the management, specific focus on management uh, university, which started to add ideas of information technology in management curriculum. So, already in uh, the early 80s, they started to develop an institute for information technology, then based mainly on, on process management, on SAP, uh, SAP topics, so quite uh, traditional ways. And already in the middle of the 90s, they started to integrate media and communication management. So the question, how can you use these new channels for businesses, digital business, e-business, um, portals, um, malls, and so on. And they started to develop from a theoretical point of view, ideas, concepts, and frameworks to describe, to analyze, and to develop this aspect of media. So if you look, at a specific medium, you always find a logical space, a logical space defined by information objects within that specific media. A medium is also defined through the channels, the channels within this specific media to share these information objects and a community of so-called agents digital or human, doesn't matter in fact, so it's some kind of information processing issue of agents wanting to share this information, wanting to talk with this information, to use this information, even wanting to use that platform to get to some interaction in between. So this is a model to describe a medium it's not only working for digital issues, you can use it on a radio, you can use it on a newspaper. Uh, let's take local newspaper, Oberösterreichische uh, Nachrichten, so it works exactly the same. Now, this is a description. What we need in practice is not a description, we need something else. We need a reference model. We need a reference model explaining what parts do we need in a medium explaining what do we need when we build a medium, when we analyze a medium to understand what happens there, and of course, what application, what functions such a medium needs. And at the University of St. Gallen, they developed exactly such a tool to analyze media, not only digital media, we will apply that afterwards to our specific case, but of course, every media all over the world. And of course, it's from an agent perspective. Now, if you look, in this specific logical context, in this logical case, within these channel systems uh, system and within this specific organizational context by defining roles and protocols, so how to interact uh, between the agents, 
you have four specific phases, four specific needs an agent has. First, it's the need of information. An agent wants give and take information, and he needs a platform, channels, and this specific logical system concerning information. He wants to share intentions. We, customers, want to share intentions. They want to use the platform, this specific medium, to share demands, to take supplies from the platform, from the information objects. So a second phase we have to consider in constructing a media or a medium is the intention. How does it work and what kind of applications do we need? The third issue is the contract thing. Agents, customers, want to, full, to develop contracts. So it's the next step. First intention, then contracting. So we have to install on this specific platform the ability that contracts can be made from a legal point of view, of course, but also from a practical, from a process point of view. And of the end, at the end of the day, of course, a contract has to be settled. So it's the aspect or the so-called phase of settlement. And these are, in total, four phases you always have in a specific kind of medium, sometimes more, sometimes less. It depends, of course, on the different infrastructure. And you see already the question or the next question is how can we fulfill these different actions in a specific type of media? We have to consider a first basis, and this is the so-called infrastructure view. This is the physical infrastructure every single medium needs. This is paper for newspapers. These are the radio waves, the, the physics of radio waves for a radio, for example. So this is the infrastructure, or if you look at the human body, the infrastructure for medium is nothing but the skeleton of, of our human body. So this is the basis. The second is the so-called, oops, <laughs> so, the second, can we have plan B? <laughs> so, this is why I work with Fabersoft and very rarely with Microsoft. <laughs> they do not disappoint me. <laughs> so, we have this prepared, this is all part of the plan. Uh, so you see the infrastructure view, the channels. This is the skeleton of our body. We need, in a second process, the transaction view. And this, of course, is, is the, the services. These are the applications you discussed yesterday. So this is what you want concerning a medium. First, of course, we need some specific transactions concerning information. So to enable the exchange of information, we need some specific processes concerning the aspect of supply and demand. So to share the question, how can an agent tell us his intention? How can we answer uh, this intention? What do you need from a technological point of view to fulfill this need of a customer? This is what a customer wants. And the third, contracting. We need some uh, construction, some contracting tools, and we need some settlement tools. This is the transaction view, the application view, the service view of every single medium. The next step, or again, back to the human body, these are the organs. This is your stomach. This is, or are the lungs. This is your liver, especially on developer conferences, a very important transaction. <laughs> now, the implementation view, this is to combine all these services together to specific processes. This is, in fact, nothing but blood in your body, where you get the energy, the processes, who talks to whom. This is the choreography of what you have concerning the data in your platform, concerning the processes, or let's call it a more technical issue. It's a syntax. And at least the community view outside, so we talked about agents. It's a set of a community. 
They live together, they share common uh, intentions, common views, a common understanding of the world. So here we define roles. It's like on a theater play, it's like the stage. Somebody plays Hamlet, another one is Ophelia, whatever else, and the protocol. So the script, who can tell to whom what. And this is a basic structure you can, for your own uh, use, to use, uh, to analyze media. It's not only digital media, it also works for every single media out in this world. Now, we are now in the 21st century, and we have now the situation that this is nice, this is a good a practical theory, but it is still a theory. And to apply it on a customer website, there are more basic needs because at the end of the day, we want to earn money. No, we need all these transactions, all these services to, to earn money. And so we have to apply a, a different view on that or we have to adapt this specific reference model for media to our own purposes to the question of how to develop a customer web portal. And you see, of course, the views, the layers, are the same. These are the basic layers you find in every medium. But what's different are the intentions, are the action we want to provoke, because we want to provoke specific actions from our customers. First, it's of course again information. It's a brilliant information platform. So we want to have it as easy as possible that people can see our offer that people can inform themselves who is St. Callum Business School, what do they offer, do I find the right seminar, is it on the right time, do I have any further questions. So we want them to get everything they need on our customer web portal. Second is we want to talk. We want them to talk to us. We want us to talk to them. Because there's one major thing we know, if somebody calls us and has a question concerning a seminar, they already booked. Because we're quite good at that, explaining what a seminar is, uh, explaining the details, because everyone who's on, on our phone is also a trainer. So everyone on our outline, uh, in this case, is also performing as a trainer, so we know exactly what happens within a seminar, group dynamics, where it takes place. We know the hotel rooms, so we know everything. Talk, dialogue. And the platform, the medium, needs to activate this dialogue. Third, they should do something. Because just by talking, we do not earn money. We need to provoke action, so buying at the end of the day. So we need applications helping us that people can buy easily without obstacles. We do not want to stop them. If you look at our today's web shop, it's more a stopping. It's more a selecting of users we do not want because it's just too complicated. But of course, we want them. So it's our problem. And last thing, and this is new in the 21st century, because of the reduction of the production cost of digital information, zero. The margin cost of spreading digital information is also zero, and this is quite different. In the early days, if you had a book, you have to copy that book, some production costs. If you want to copy, or if you want even to print out a PDF document, there are some costs, even if it's not your specific cost center paying for this, but somebody has to pay for it. But by telling on a digital way, costs are, multiplication costs are zero. So we should use that not only on a digital way, of course, it's also word uh, to mouth. And this is exactly what we as a customer expect from a customer web portal. It's an easy IT infrastructure. We do not want to care concerning hosting. It was the last 10 years, it, it was a pain to talk to hosting providers, and it was terrible. So we don't want to care. Fire and forget. It should work. The same concerning application. We want all these applications within. We do not want any professional technolo uh, technicians taking some, some codes from there, some, some tools from there, putting them together. It doesn't work, so we have to change this and apply this and again. So this is not a point of our interest. It should work. Concerning all four different uh, phases. The implementation, as easy as possible. We want to control the processes. This is a major point. I will come back on that later. Because the customer processes are, the customer value processes are the most important processes in developing a business. Many companies lost control about their customer value chain. 
we don't want to. So we want to have the complete control of every customer, every single customer interaction, because th this is our major point of differentiation. And who, so target group, share the community, or choose the community, segment the community, define specific uh, landing pages for communities as easy as possible. So that's exactly what we want. And this developed our new digital marketing strategy. So in the center, right, this is our nice little uh, house, and in, in the center, customer web portal, as I described with a systematical approach, that specific framework developed by the University of St. Callum applied to our specific needs. Of course, somebody has to come to that platform, not just being there doesn't help you. So we still have, and this is a major issue, our print department, because within the next 10 years, still 50, 40 to 50% of our customer will only act on printing information. Maybe it changes within 10 years, but the next 10 years, you still have time. It's very, very important. Of course, SMS, CO, we did that already five years ago. Um, other channels, social media, word to mouth, it's very, very important references. We base on recommendation. If somebody is happy with our seminar, that happens quite often, they talk to somebody else within the company, without, uh, outside the company, and this is our major tool to multiply. Uh, of course, we have some external partners. We work uh, with the University of uh, Klagenfurt, with uh, Krakow. We have some specific uh, consulting uh, companies, Kraus, Hosek, and so on, also sharing our uh, knowledge, our platform, and we have some satellites for specific topics, um, business Books and Tools is a publishing company where we publish a diploma thesis, for example, if, if it's brilliant work, so we want to give something back to our students. It's the Association of Integrated Management for, for the work of uh, Mr. Bleicher. It's a concept of integrated management. And our little daughter, the Management Academy, uh, which also is part of the concept. Now, you may ask, why didn't they do that before? It's not rocket science. There are many ways of doing such a platform during the last 10 years. Now, if you look close to the history of, of web development and go back 25 years, then traditionally it was a way of insourcing this issue. So junior company had a programmer or you had a friend knowing something about HTML and this new developing technology, and he told you, mm, website would be nice. We told him then, do it. So he made a little website, nice uh, pictures, some information, and it worked. So this was the beginning of the traditional development of websites, insourcing by some guy knowing uh, this is more, it was more like a hobby. We did exactly this. First version was a friend of our house. He did that. Second version was the same friend. And uh, he did that. It was brilliant work for those times. It's still a, a brilliant website concerning information, but it's definitely not concerning technology. The next phase, what happens then, because of more complexity, new technologies, new standards, uh, new languages, new possibilities, it get more complex. So just one person wasn't able to do that, even if you had some specific application, jobs, and so on and so on. So you need more specialists. And now, special for companies like our companies, small and medium companies, it's just too expensive to have five developers in-house doing nothing but maintain the website. It's just too expensive. So what did many companies do? They went to some web agencies and they helped them to develop a website. I myself worked uh, 12 years ago uh, for Creologix, exactly a supplier for this. Some were brilliant in programming, some were brilliant in web design. Creologix combined both, but there was one big point all those web developing agents never got. We tried it hard during the last 10 years to find somebody helping us to develop a new customer web, for, uh, web platform. We did that even with the Management Academy site based on Typo 3, but honestly, we were really disappointed. There's always one specific lack. Not a single web agency got the understanding of our business model. Either they were not able to from, from, a, from <laughs> a specific organ. 
on the other way, they were too arrogant. So they didn't interest themselves for our main business model. We meet and meet and met again. We invited them to our house. We explained them our business model. We explained them the seminars, the content of the seminars, the style, how we share uh, information. We did everything, but they didn't understand uh, our business model. And then we said, it doesn't make sense to give our knowledge outside because they just benefit from our knowledge and then selling it to, to some competitors. That's what we definitely do not want. And therefore, we waited because nobody outside in the world could explain it to us. So the age of outsourcing was very disappointed from our, uh, for our company. And it is also very disappointing for many, many small and medium companies because they were always or are always disappointed that they never get what they really want. And they had to pay an awful lot for it. So we waited because we all knew in every business, you have always the same pendulum from insourcing to outsourcing and back to insourcing as a commodity. This is traditional for every market when it gets into a major phase on a life cycle, when it gets into a certain saturation, more competition, that a certain service develops from speciality to a commodity. And this is exactly what happens now in the web development issue because now it gets easy, comfortable for us as non-professionals to be able to do everything we developed here on our own purposes based on a working uh, technology. Based on the Fabersoft technology, and I would like to show you some examples how we work with Fabersoft technologies to show you some examples of how all these things you discussed yesterday, these applications can help us to develop a new way of the customer portal, exactly as easy, as fast for our needs, as easy to apply, as fast to update, to far, as fast to perform. And one major issue we have is we need to update very fast if there are any specific events, if there are any new seminars. So we do not want to depend on a certain programmer, which, of course, especially in this time, is on holiday. So we have to wait two weeks, and it doesn't work, and it do, does not that what we really want. So we want to do it on our own, based on a working platform. Um, Faber 5 is the platform. We just add a new page. If you go to news, you want to add some new seminars, a page, add page, um, title, it's a BAV seminar, it's for German insurance companies concerning pension funds, uh, name of the seminar, we can already optimize um, exactly template, it's news, it's a child, a child is born, and search engine optimization, some keywords, insurance company, pension, a description, seminar for pension managers, and apply. Now, content, very easy, copy-paste. As I already mentioned, our website is really brilliant concerning content. There's everything you need to know. So we can just go back. If we change from old uh, to new, copy, paste, change some headings if you need, you don't need because it takes the same headings and what do you see? The link is already there. This is comfortable for us. We do not want to make some mistakes or insert some code and have always to consider, oh, we forgot the link or we have to do that. We have to adjust the link. This is what we want. Easy, easy, easy and fast. We can even add uh, some forms because we want to have some feedback. So insert after a form for text boxes. I want to know name and so on. Um, one select box for the feedbacks in degrees, a text area so they can send us some personal information. We have to label it, surname, for example, name, email. Email is required, it's very important because you want to talk to him, back to him if it uh, was not satisfying. And at the end of the day, the company, 
It's also very important for reference uh, issues, for example. Um, the label, how did you like it? So it's what we want to know. Was it excellent? Hmm? 80%, of course, it was excellent. Was it good? Well, when it's good, we're not happy. Was it average? Then we have a problem. Or was it not satisfying? Then we have to do and change something. And, of course, your feedback. You can type in something, what you want uh, to tell us, save, and the form is there. Now, if you want to tell us something, just fill in. Exactly. Submit. Quick answer. It worked. We got the feedback. The customer got the feedback that the feedback is there, so everyone is happy. Um, what else can we do? Sometimes uh, you even have to integrate some code issues. For example, Twitter widget. Of course, this is at the end of our capabilities because this is some strange languages uh, you have to use. It's not plain text. Insert after the same Twitter widget, our <coughs> tweets on Seminare SGBS, mainly focused on uh, alumni events, and it's already there. So it's very easy to implement. It's exactly what we want. We don't have to care. Next, this is quite traditional content. Now, it's not only Faber 5, which is important for us. It's the whole bunch of application. It's a combination of the strength of Fabersoft being able to supply us with the customer web portal. And one important thing is MindPreeze and especially the information pairing issue. Because we have much content or many content issues on our platform and we do not want to enter the same information twice or three times or, or even more. Because it's always the danger of making mistakes. We want to generate content from existing content specified for specific segments, target groups. For example, if we have news, we have news specifically for our former participants, for our alumni, and how to select this news, we add after a MindPrees information pairing query. So we ask for information we already have on our platform. Well, we already filled that in. And now we just want these news concerning alumni. And of course, we don't want the hundreds, we only want three, and it's already there. It's not magic, it works. And it's what we want again. The same for news, which is not thought for alumni. So, mine please, the same query, just with a not applied. And well, again, three entries apply, and it's there. We sometimes have even lists of books, book recommendation or specific books concerning the work to the integrated management uh, concept developed by Professor Knut Bleicher. So if you want to show what did he write, you can do the same. Ask only for books by Bleicher, then not every book is shown, and you just see a list of the major books he wrote, and it's very, very easy. We can delete it suddenly as soon as we do not want to have it and we can add it for example if tomorrow was a specific event with Knut Bleicher we knew many people are looking for specific information concerning his books so we just apply MindPress information pairing on our website and it works. Now MindPress is not just about information pairing it's also a brilliant search engine so if people are looking for a specific seminar finance seminar they enter they get the answer, they get the result. It's the finance week uh, in London, takes place during the Olympic Games, uh, highly recommendable. Now, what you see on the seminar, 
if you go back to the finance week, entering seminars is different because you have now data which is a bit special. It's as I already mentioned, it's the issue about the date. We do want to introduce generated data from our FileMaker platform. So we don't want to enter every single date manually. We do not want to maintain it. It's again a high risk for making mistakes. I, I did that on, on Typo 3 on the Management Academy website years ago, and it was a terrible work. It took every quarter five hours just to update the seminar dates, high risk for dangers, and we, all, we have this information. So by using Faber 5, we can just take the information with the CSV file out of our database, integrate configuration, upload a CSV. In this case, it's the CSV Seminare. Then we add a new seminar. Let's uh, make it a junior program. So again, add page, title, general management for juniors, name, general management for juniors, template. We need to uh, take a specific template. It's seminar because it's then direct linked to a specific database. We optimize our search engine by adding some, some keywords, not just uh, quick and dirty, uh, general management, uh, juniors, and five-day seminar for junior managers. That, that should be enough. Now. And then, now what is important in the seminar to link it with the database is the tab seminar. Every seminar has, a, has an ID, has a code. In this case, it's the code 21. Right? It's, the answer is not uh, 42, it's 21. So <laughs> save, and it's already there. And we have just to fill in some content. Again, as you already know, copy-paste from our traditional website, take the concept of the seminar, copy it, paste it, and it's there, very easy. One seminar, two minutes. This is an uh, improvement. And that's not all. Because, as I already mentioned, our customers still are very conservative, so they need something in their hands. They need a hard copy. Hmm? They want to print out something, so you have to insert a document, insert after. Now, a public link, because we want to share this information to everyone who is interested in a specific general management uh, seminar. We go to file, we select the file from our team room, so it's directly linked to, and this is the third issue, to Folio Cloud. So everything is on the cloud and we can use the whole architecture, uh, or the whole infrastructure. File, choose folder, Choose file, name it, opening new window, very easy. And now there's, there's one, one last point uh, concerning information on our website. After the seminar, very often our trainers share information specifically for seminar participants. These are additional worksheets, these are additional uh, articles, these are some specific details to some cases they did during the four or five day uh, seminar. But this is information we only want to, see, to be seen by the group of participants. And we do not want to share it with some, some tools, you all know, they are all not, not secure, not safe. We do not trust uh, Dropbox, some American-based. You never know where the server is, CIA, and so on. So we want it safe and secure. Again, it's linked to the team room insert, not the public, but the private link, where we exactly can define who is able to see it by, again, using the infrastructure. You remember, infrastructure view, of Folio Cloud helping us. Now it's, of course, not the detail program, it's the, the, the script. And you see here the link to the current folder to determine who is able to have access. 
to this specific platform. Define access, we come back to this later, uh, apply it. To seminar, open link, apply. So now how does it work in practice? With this example, you do not see the power of uh, Folio Cloud. Now let's log out with the current user. Let's log in with a user which has no access. And let's see what happens. It's not there. So we want the user to have access. We go to our team room, add him, invite him easily as it works. We go back to the web page, refresh, and it's there. You will see. It takes a bit longer because he has to look where it is, and here it is. That's Fabasoft. Thank you very much.